Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the solar plexus chakra. And if that goes over your head when I first say anything, oh, here we go. We're going to talk about some, some, some crazy stuff today. You're kind of right, but if you want to heal, if you want your life to change, you really have to be open to these kinds of things. So we're going to be talking about the solar plexus, the energy of the solar plexus, and how we can harness it to make big changes in our lives so that we can see big changes in things that we want to see big changes in. So if you're in a situation where you don't like, or you're, maybe let's say you, you don't like, or you're not happy with, or your current like physical reality isn't what you desire it to be, this can look like a lot of different things. Often, this will look like digestive disorders or some kind of health problem. Very interestingly, the solar plexus chakra is in where the solar plexus is. So if you feel into your where your ribs are, you've got that kind of squishy bit, like in the middle, just underneath. This is this is your solar plexus. This is exactly where your stomach and the upper parts of your small intestine are. And if you have upper digestive disorders, like GERD, reflux, SIBO, CIFO, um, any kind of like motility issues, uh, Crohn's colitis, like all these digestive orders, they're, they're all really connected with that with this chakra. And it's really important that you understand what it is and how it goes out of balance if you wanna if you want if you want to heal this. And I'm not saying don't do the physical things. You know, you've seen all my other videos. You've seen me talking about probiotics, but you have to look at these situations holistically if you want to find a holistic resolution. You have to make big changes if you want to see big changes. And I'm gonna share with you how you can use the energy of the solar plexus to do this today. So I, I believe in like root cause. I believe in you truly have to understand a situation if you want to change it. If you want to solve a problem, you have to clearly define it. And that is what we have to do first. So you have to look at the energy of the solar plexus and what it is. So the energy of the solar plexus is really connected with our personal power. So this is our ability to make decisions. This is our ability to, to create and hold island groups. This is our ability to experience, I would say like the healthy expressions of anger. So this is like, and again, you've got your liver, which is almost exactly in this place. And your liver is really connected with, with anger energy. So this is really connected with self-acceptance, but, but, but more than that, self-confidence, self-worth and self-value, self-reassurance. It's really connected with this feeling of like, I am enough. And, and we live in a, in a wild battle like, with, when nobody feels like they're enough. And it's, it's, it's very sad. And you're going to see how this connects in with health problems, particularly digestive diseases. So this, this, this energy, when this is out of balance, you will see this manifest in people's lives. And on a physical level of manifestation, this looks like digestive disorders, but there are other very characteristic things that you can look for. And this is kind of like a checklist that you can that you can go through now and you can say, is this me? Like, is this something that I also need to look at? So do you, do you think you're living your best life? Like, do you feel comfortable taking up space? Like, can you be, let's say like out in public and like take up lots of space and sit back and feel relaxed and be able to say, project your voice forward? You know, can you handle having creating some disturbance in the environment around you and having people see you and acknowledge you and recognize that you are existing there. Like, can you handle that? Or does that feel extremely uncomfortable? Does that make you want to like shrivel up into a little ball? Does that make you want to disappear? If so, this could be a solar plexus, imba solar plexus imbalance. Do you feel like confident? Could you like imagine your, your dream job, like could you walk into a job interview and like, yes, and like there's some level of normal like nervousness or anxiety, but could you walk in there and like, and like fucking own it? Could you go in there and be like, this is the job for me, like, and, and deliver your, your, like your pitch or you're basically pitching yourself. Like, could you sell yourself with confidence? Could you go in there and be like, I'm so good for this. Like I fit in here. And would you have like the charisma and the social skills to be able to like deliver that very well? Excuse me. If not, probably a solar plexus imbalance. Do you have a life that, that 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 makes you feel like you're in control? Like, do you feel like you're 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 at the wheel? Do you feel like you're you're you're, you're driving, or do you feel like life's kind of happening to you? Like, do you feel like you can 
do the things you want or you feel like you're just living in this pattern or this mold of every day is the same and you're not really in control of what's happening and you're kind of just hoping that one day maybe some hopeful dreams or aspirations that you have like maybe you want to travel here maybe you want to go and do this career maybe you want to turn this hobby into something that's making money for you turn this this little like passion project into a into a side hustle and then potentially into like your main career like you want to do that, but the, on a day-to-day basis, you never actually practically make any steps towards these things. If so, you need to look at the problem of having a balance. And then you have to ask, okay, why does this happen? How do we form this imbalance in the first place? And so again, what we're doing is building, we're building all of the criteria. We're really clearly assessing this problem from every different angle. And when you do that, when you clearly define a problem and you really understand it well, the solution very often presents itself. Like you don't have to look for it. The reason you can't find the solution is because you don't actually have a clearly defined problem. Because when you do, it just comes very, very easily. So this is why I'm trying to lead you into this. So you can actually see this very holistically and the solution will pop out, will pop out to you. So why does this happen? So the solar plexus develops all this, the, the, the energy of this, um, the energy of this chakra develops when we're like three, four, five years old. And this is where we start to define our own ego. This is where we separate from our mother. So up until this, up until like age three, we're basically egoless. We see ourselves as a part of our mother or as part of existing in the feminine energy, which is, which is like, a, it, it, there's no distinction. There's no, there's no boundary. There's, there's just, there just is. And it's just more this experience, this experiential um, reality. And well, f- first of all, this is why, it's, why childhood trauma is really, um, is really a big thing, especially up till these ages, because anything that happens to you, you, you take as being like personally, like a part of your, your experience, like your ego hasn't formed and you can't distinguish between self and other. So anything other does is also a self thing. So if you receive abuse or if you're neglected or there's any trauma, you will just pick it up. You you actually don't have any defense mechanism because you have no ego to create a boundary there. And when this when this when this um ego begins to form, this is when we learn how to use this anger energy. So this is where we learn how to make our own decisions. So this is this is if you look at children, this is where they start to get really like, let's say like badly behaved and it's not that they're actually badly behaved it's that they're actually becoming their own individual and they're not just doing everything that you want and they're not completely complacent with you just doing doing everything and you being a part of that they're trying to define their own identity they're trying to find themselves and they do that with contrast and with with creating a boundary and they will clash like your boundary and their boundary you will clash a child that is able to do this in a healthy way will learn that they can make decisions and that their decisions and their actions have consequences. They will learn that they can use their anger energy to change situations or to make decisions or to take control of that wheel and and drive. You know, they get a feeling of control or of of individuation in their life. If this doesn't happen, you will see... So there's a socialization that goes here. If If this doesn't happen one way, you will basically see codependency develop where somebody becomes egoless or they actually don't, but they identify with being egoless as their ego, like that's the defense mechanism. So you will see people here that are very passive, that are people pleasers, that have very low self-worth and their self-worth is very much attached to what other people perceive of of them. So that's that's one way. And then the other way is not knowing how to use anger energy in, in the other form. So this is like narcissism. This is psychopathy. This is... Both of these are very nasty. Both of these are not nice. But in the middle, you have this healthy, balanced individual that knows that they are intrinsically valuable and, and can make decisions and feels like they're in control of their life and they can take actionable steps to move forward to achieve the things that they want to achieve in their life. And that's awesome. When you find that balance, it's really, really cool. So often the reason that we have a problem here, we have an imbalance, is is due to this um, this developmental stage between age three to five, where the ego is forming, the solar plexus is sharper, is developing, and how that works in the, the the dynamic with society and also with our with our like family structure at the time. You can imagine if you have a single parent, or if you are an orphan, or if you were abused or neglected, this process is just absolutely a disaster. Like it does not go very well at all. 
and then you'll end up in one of these camps narcissist psychopath or um developing those kinds of tendencies or people please are um you could say avoidant as well people that become avoidant or people that don't like being around people very antisocial introversion can be really developed to this not actually because you're an introvert as a uh by nature but also like as a trauma response so what we need to do is we need to actually support your body through that development of stage that you never went through and i found it very interesting that as we go through our life we kind of go through this this loop where our chakra is going to reactivate at different stages. So just as your root then goes to your soul, to your sacral and then to your solar plexus and then through and through and up through your body, once it gets to the top, it will loop. It will go back down. You redevelop the root into a different level and then you'll redevelop the, the sacral. Then you'll redevelop the solar plexus. So if you watch this video, there's a good likelihood that you're probably in this area right now. You're probably working at least on some level of redeveloping this, um, this part of this up. Excuse me. <clears throat> So from, from here, you need to work on seeing the traits and understanding what this, this, this chakra is supposed to do for you and working on trying to integrate these things into your life. So one thing many people struggle with is like indecision or not being able to make decisions or feeling like making decisions is very, very challenging or very, very difficult, either because they're afraid of the consequences of the decision or just the like just the inability to make make decisions and just openly agreeable and just feel like they're not really in control or just go with the go with the flow what can be really helpful here is doing an activity called your core values so you basically you see a list of i believe it's like between two and three hundred words and you go through and you just select every word to you that feels meaningful so for example when i go through i pick abundance and freedom integrity leadership like these are all words that have a strong meaning to me and this feel really important to me so write them down in a big list and then you want to try to get all of those words that you've written down you, you can go on google and you can type core values list and it'll give you a list of all of these different words so this is like practical step one if this video is resonating with you and you actually want your life to change Again, you probably might struggle with that solar plexus energy of like doing like doing things or making decisions. Like now, I'm telling you, this is a really good time to make a decision, but I'm going to get a, a pen of paper. I'm going to go onto another website, type core values list, and actually do this exercise and activity because you're actually going to do something. You're actually going to change something. The information itself is not is not good enough. You actually have to actually do it. And you need to do this if you don't know what your core values are. So if I said, what are your core values? And you don't know, this means you need to do this because they're very cool. They basically are going to define whether you have a life that feels meaningful and successful and uh, valuable to you, or whether your life is just like passing you by and then you just lay on your deathbed full of regrets. Like this is how you determine that. So you want to take that big list and then you write the ones that you identify with and then you want to order it. So you want to take the ones that are the most meaningful to you, put them at the top and then go down. You want to take your top five, they're your core values. And your biggest core value is your top one. So my, 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 my core value right at the top is abundance, which is very, very interesting. Especially when you come from looking at my situation, it kind of puts, you, puts my life into context because one of my core values is, well, my top core value is abundance. And if you look at my life, what it has looked like, it's completely the opposite. So chronic fatigue syndrome, absolutely no energy, not an abundant amount of energy, not even a sufficient enough amount just to literally bare minimum survive. If you look at the level of food sensitivities and restrictions that I have, I was eating five foods for five years. That is the complete opposite of abundance. I basically lived on benefits up until I was until I got sick, and then I went on to disability disability benefits. Not not much disposable income, being on benefit, completely the the opposite of of abundance. So you can see how. It could go both ways. Maybe my core value of abundance has been defined by my, my experiences, but also maybe on some level, when I, when I came here, when I decided to have this life, I knew that abundance was going to be one of my core values and aligned myself with an experience in life that would show me the exact opposite. So through the law of contrast, I would actually learn what is important to me. And that's helpful. That helps to clarify. That. So when I'm now in a place where I need to make a decision, when I need to, like, this is something I've struggled with a lot in both ends. So the narcissism or the psychopathy 
that I have some traits and characteristics there. And also the inability to make decisions, terrified to, to take action, being like very passive. I also have traits here. So I've tried to marry these two together and come to that healthy balance. And that's really what this healing is about. So now when I'm in a situation where I don't know what decision to make, I, I, I think, okay, what are my options here? And what options align mostly with my core values? Core val my core values, again, being abundance, um, integrity, freedom. Like they're, 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 they're some of my biggest ones, leadership. What, what, what can I do that aligns with these values? So I would then like start thinking like, okay, these are the options. And then usually what happens, and th this is, this is like a common theme with, this is a common theme with this solar plexus energy is you then become aware of what you want to do. You're like, okay, like this, this path of action would be very much aligned with my values. And then you're hit with this fear and this shame. You're just hit with this, these like very feelingly, overwhelmingly emotions. This is terrifying. I don't know how I can move forward with this. This is absolutely like I'm terrified. And also, so it could be one or the other, it could be both. I feel like so much shame. I feel so ashamed of that, of the path or action that I need to take that I, I cannot take it. It, it, it. it makes me experience so much shame. It's giving. <clears throat> so the fear is more, more connected to the root chakra. Um, and the, the shame is more connected to the solar plexus. But usually if you've got an imbalance in one, you've got an imbalance in the other, especially if you've got digestive disorders, like your bottom three chakras are just, are just a mess. The, the second one, the safe will be connected to pleasure. So always asking like, instead of what is the like most torturous way to do this? Like, where is the love? Like, where is the pleasure? Where is the satisfaction? Where's the enjoyment? Where are the positive emotions? Brain vaping can also be really, really helpful if you have an imbalance there. So then you, you bring all those up and then all those emotions hit you and you're like, I'm terrified, I'm ashamed. And then it's like, okay, now, now you understand why you, you, you live a life out of, out of alignment with your core values. Because when you do, you experience fear, you experience shame, you experience all these emotions that are really overwhelming that you don't know how to process. And that's why you like lock them in a box, shove them in your trauma backpack, and you just live a life that isn't really what you want. But when you can see that all of this is happening, it's really helpful because then you can say, okay, I'm not just, I'm not just living a life of destiny where my, my fate has already been decided for me by my traumatic experiences. You can actually see how the trauma is playing out. You could see how what has happened to you has dictated your natural sort of like almost like default operating system, like the way that you go about doing things. And then when you have this information about your core values, you can see, oh, there's this big gap. There's a big difference between what I normally would do by default and what is actually best for me and what is in alignment with my, my core values and with me basically like living my life according to what I want it to be. And then it's about stepping from here to here and figuring out how to do that. And this often is going to require all of the traits of the solar plexus. So this is, this is going to require confidence. This is going to require self-worth. This is going to require strong boundaries. This is going to require working through all of these things. So all of these things will be tested. Your self-worth will be tested. Your self-value will be tested. Your self-confidence will be tested. Your boundaries will be tested. When, you, when you're working through this, the universe is going to show you exactly where you got stuck and why you defaulted to your pattern in the first place. It's going to throw it all up in your face. And that's not something everybody wants to do. And that this, this whole thing, this, 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 if I could summarize the, the solar plexus energy is basically about control. And this is why we, what we need to do to actually get what we want is we need to make big changes, but we feel like a small person. We feel like we can't live up to doing those things. So instead. And everybody has this energy of control. So instead, what we do is we redirect this energy of control into something that feels smaller and like something we actually feel safe controlling, which can be, and in my case was, and I see it very frequently with my clients, is I'm going to try this new restrictive diet to try and manage and control my symptoms. I'm going to try this new supplement regime. I'm going to try taking this new supplement, that new supplement, that new supplement. Like that's you trying to take back control. That's you trying to implement a challenge to change your situation. However, it's not a meaningful change. It's not the thing that's actually going to change your situation. 
For example, I see many people living in moldy buildings and they stay in mold, but they're doing this detox or they do that restrictive diet or they'll try this new binder or this new supplement, but staying in the mold. Because changing habits, like changing physical location is a very big problem. It's, a ve it's very challenging. You're going to have to challenge your self-worth. You're going to have to challenge yourself, your, your values. You're going to have to challenge your, your boundaries, your ability to go out into the world and, and, and say like, this is what I want. This is what is acceptable for me to live, to live it. And that's really hard. So what a lot of people do is they'll just like, okay, that's too big of a problem. I'm just going to pretend that doesn't exist. Or I'm going to throw that over there. And instead I'm going to focus on controlling my diet or my supplements or, or these things, these, these small things that I feel safe controlling over here. And what this does is it gives you an ability to throw that control onto something because it has to go somewhere, but then the situation doesn't change and you stay stuck exactly where you are. So if you want your situation to change, it's about figuring out those meaningful changes and these are always going to feel uncomfortable because they're going to feel way bigger than you. Because if they didn't, you'd have done them already, right? If, you, if they didn't feel intimidating, if they didn't feel overwhelming, if they didn't feel out of your comfort zone, you would already be tackling them. You'd be already throwing yourself at them because you want to have the life that you want to have. You want to have health. You want to have money. You want to have uh, a, a life that feels like fulfilling. You want to have good relationships. Like you want all of these things because you're a human. Like it's by default. You always, like everyone wants these things. These are like basic if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you're a human, you want these things, but you don't have them. And why don't you have them? Because they feel bigger than you. And you're taking that energy of control and you're putting it on something that feels easier. So if you want big things to change, if you want your health to change, you have to make big changes. Like for me, it's very hard knowing that I still am somewhat sensitive to mold and living in mold is not a good idea. To travel from a place that I know is safe, like an environment that is, that is that is like there's no mold there. Like, to jump out of safety to then go and travel to Thailand where there's very high humidity and then to go to uh, and, and, and to to England and then to Germany and then to to Portugal where I'm on the coast right now and like mold is a big risk you know like it's th these are scary changes but it's not just taking a new supplement it's exposing myself to all these different environments has caused me to grow and challenge myself in different ways so like in, when we were in, in Thailand, when I was in Chiang Mai, I really grew a lot as a person. I, I actually felt like more safe taking up space and like I could vocalize myself in, in public. And you might think, oh, like I make these videos and I've seen really cold and like, I, I struggle with it still. I struggle with it in, in, in person. Um, but it's, it, it's like going through these changes that are really hard, are actually the things that have helped me heal because they've helped me evolve as a person, not just like making my physical symptoms disappear, although that has been happening, but growing and evolving as a person. So instead of living by my, like my destiny or my predetermined route that my trauma would have them taking, I'm living more in alignment with my core values and developing the ability to like have the self-confidence, have the self-worth, to have the boundaries and to harness that solar plexus energy so that my life changes. And if the energy isn't running through your solar plexus correctly, what, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to have digestive problems. Like you will have SIBO, you will have candida, you will have um, upper GI problems. So if in that solar plexus area, you have any discomfort, you you have a solar plexus imbalance. You, 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 you just simply do. The way, that your, the, the way that your body works is you have, you have a pyramid of, of, you can call it like of dimensions or of, of experience. You have the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, right at the top. And if you have a, think about these as layers that lay over your body. So you have your physical body, and then you have your, your thoughts. They're like a layer over your body. You can't see it, but they're there. And you know they're there because they follow you wherever you go. They're always, they're always there. Like you can go to Spain, you can go to Argentina, you can go wherever you want, they will follow you. But you can kind of work with them. They're, they're, they're more tangible. Your emotions, they also follow you wherever you go. They're, all, they're like a layer out here. They're further out. They're more ethereal. Emotions are really hard to know what to do with them all the time. You're like, I feel depressed and I don't have any idea why. Or I'm really angry and I don't know what to do with that. These are more, these are even less dense. But again, they follow you wherever, wherever you go. If you're depressed in France, you'll probably be depre depressed in um, New Mexico. Like it doesn't matter, they follow you. When you have an injury, when you have a chronic disease, it's not just on you, it's never just on the physical. Imagine you have like a big knife and you stab it through all of these layers. So it, it creates 
a, a mental a mental imbalance and an emotional imbalance too. It is always the cans. And the way that you can like pick this apart a little bit is you've got whatever your whatever it is you have happening in the digestive system, like whatever your symptoms are, you have a certain neural pathway that is attached to them. So when you have a symptom flare up, your brain fires in a certain pattern. Like you feel the pain, you feel the discomfort, you feel the symptom. I did this wrong. I did that. This is happening because of this. Like your brain like fires. And then as all these things fire off, certain emotions come up. I feel depressed. I feel anxious. I feel afraid. They're connected. And you have to work on all of the layers because if you've got the emotional imbalance, it causes an imbalance in the thought process, which also causes an imbalance in the physical as well. So if you've got this emotional imprint in you that for some reason, you have an imbalance in your soul plexus chakra. You're not valuable. You are not allowed to make decisions. You don't have any self-worth. That will affect the way that you think and the way that you think will de determine the way that you make decisions. And that will affect your physical body as well. So you always have to go, again, this is the root cause. If your root cause is in trauma, you can take all the supplements you want. You can take antibiotics. You can take antimicrobials. You can take probiotics. You can do everything that you like and it isn't going to change anything because that's not where the problem actually is. And this kind of ties in again to if you if you do have a trauma, facing that trauma is a big fit, you know, and it's a lot safer to think, okay, I have a digestive problem. I'll just take this supplement. I'll just restrict my diet. I'll just do this. I'll do that. This feels safe. This feels comfortable. This big trauma thing over here doesn't exist. I can't see it. The thing is, it's you're, you're pretending. This is this is the this is the work of the shadow. This is shadow work. The shadow keeps the things that feel too overwhelming, too unsafe, keeps them invisible to you, keeps them in the back of your mind. And then you can focus on doing these little things that actually don't change anything, that keep you stuck exactly where you are and facilitate no meaningful change that make you feel like you're doing something to change the situation. But you're actually not. You're just stuck and you're actually just pretending to yourself. This is one of the ego, the ego's tricks. You're just pretending to yourself nothing's actually changing. You need to face the thing that is actually going to make the change. And the thing that's really tough about this is you can't see your own shadow. That's the whole point. That's why it's called the shadow. You can't see it. So I'm going to finish this up today. And I'm going to say, if you need anyone to help you find your shadow, I would be more than happy to do it. The reason I can help you see your shadow is I've been working for, oh, it's going to be a decade now on trying to find mine. And it's always elusive and it's always very hard for me to see myself and I need to get other people to help me see it. But I know just how much of an impact that this has in healing and recovery. So if you feel like you're in a place where maybe you're not sure, but you think you want to try and face the big things that are stopping you from healing or that are stopping you from having the life that you want to have and you don't want to just play around over here in this little safe zone where you're taking one new supplement or you're doing one new dietary restriction, you actually want to change your life. You know, you want to... Have a career that's meaningful to you. Maybe start your own business. Maybe do something big. You know, something big. If you want to find a relationship that feels meaningful, you don't want to settle for codependency and narcissism. You actually want to find a relationship that has polarity, that has love, that is a real, true, genuine, healthy relationship. And if you want your health actually to change, you know, I see countless people that have chronic health problems for 30, 40, or 50 years. And they, they never get better. And they can. A lot of the time they can. It's just the people are not willing to look at the, the, the place that they need to look. So you can change things. You, you can. I think that in my case, being, being a bit young and having a lot of neuroplasticity is, is helpful. Because I'm like, okay, I can see things differently. But I'm telling you, you can change these things. And if you need help doing it, it would be my pleasure to help you do that because I know how much it hurts to be stuck in a little box where your life is not what it could be, where you have debilitating chronic health problems, where you don't have any money and you can't do anything that you want, where all your relationships are just filled with abuse, with, again, so you've got abuse, you've got neglect, narcissism, codependency. If you actually want a life that's defined by what is valuable to you, you can have it. But you have to harness this solar plexus energy. And you have to be brave enough. You have to be self-confident enough. You have to have enough self-worth to be able to 
take an actionable step that's actually going to change your situation. And that could be sending me a message. If it is, do it. Or shoot me an email, support at williamdickinson.co.uk. If it's something else, then go and do that instead. Take care. I hope it's been helpful. See you soon. Bye-bye.